you so Hi. much for joining me. It's just great to have you here. Um, I just wanted to start by asking you a little bit about your art and I can see one of your gorgeous paintings behind you. Thank you. And I would say one of your signature styles is your, you've got a lovely evocative feel. Um, what's your thought process? Well, I actually, because I started painting sort of coming from a life drawing background, um, I've always been very, very figure focused, so very portraiture focused. And it's only been over the last couple of years, I've really noticed that my connection to the figure comes from being a very emotional person. So I definitely am a live right under the surface kind of person. So I can't hide my emotions at all. If I get flustered, I go bright red in the face. If I get emotional, I'll cry at the drop of a hat, things like that. And I've lived that way my whole life. But this is something that I'm now really seeing as to why I like to paint what I like to paint. And it is a bit of an emotional release to me. And it's a bit of a, whenever I see a figure, I almost like to heighten whatever emotions I'm feeling and whatever the figure's going through. So it's kind of creating a narrative without a storyline, just a feeling and that's something I love to bring into my work because I feel like as a viewer, as an audience member, if you look at a painting or a piece of artwork or an experience and you feel something, that's the most powerful thing that can yeah. happen in an artwork. So that's sort of what I'm always aiming for now. And it's, it's fun to finally be at that point where I can realize where it's coming from and yeah, how effective it can be. It's fantastic. And you certainly do have a heightened emotion in your work. I mean, it's very, very evocative work. Um, and so when you're painting, do you feel that emotion yourself or is it more that you look back on the painting and you go, oh, that's what I was, that's what I was trying to, to do? I think it's sort of almost a process of waves that I'll have the uh, original idea for a pose or the idea for a composition and I'll get a bit of a wave of a, oh, that, that's something I want to focus on. And then you take reference photos and you look through 40 photos you've taken and one of them will hit you a little bit and you'll go, oh, that's that's what I, I'm looking for, that hit it right on the money. And then as you start painting, your colours come into it and you, you can feel it again. And it's sort of something that I can like use to guide me through a painting. So I'm less of a do seven plans and then, you know, pick the right one. I really like to sort of do each stage of the painting and really focus on what hits me and go, oh, that's the right direction. That's the right direction and get to where I feel like it's right rather than it perfectly matches what I originally thought. So if your painting is a release for you, I'm interested to know that if you don't paint, like if you were forced and somebody, you know, handcuffed you and said, right, you're <laughs> going anywhere near your paints for two months now. Yeah. That sounds like hell, doesn't it? But if yeah. that happened, well, do you get more emotional because you're not getting that release? Definitely. And unfortunately, in emotional times at the moment with the coronavirus and things like that, I can notice sometimes if I'm too stuck in my head emotionally, I almost self handcuff and don't paint. It's like yeah. I get stuck and it's not that I don't want to paint. It's that painting is that thing over there and I'm too stuck in my head and emotional and I can't get myself to do it. It's, mo it's kind of like motivation, but it's also, yeah, just one of those little barriers that you set up for yourself that you know it's not logical, but you do it. And yeah, I'm quite happy at the moment. I'm, I'm on the other side and making work and I'm enjoying it, but I've definitely had a few times over 2020 already where I haven't painted for a couple of weeks and I've hated it and I've had to fight through that barrier. So that kind of sucks. <laughs> It does sound quite good, doesn't it? There's been yeah. a few artists like that, I think, who've sort of gone, yay, studio time. They get into yeah. the and sort of sit there and go, oh, not yay. You know, yeah. feeling everything that's going on at the moment in the world. And that's what sometimes just the perspective of, oh, we are going through a pandemic. This is a really difficult time for everyone. It's okay to feel bad and not be productive every two seconds, but giving yourself permission to say it's okay can be hard as well. So it's something we all need to do and focus on. Yeah, that's no, very, very yeah. true. But there'll certainly be a lot of work, I'm sure, that comes later from your studio that will be reflected oh, definitely. what's going on. Yeah. yeah. Now, you have an amazing process with your work, and I'd love you to share that with people because it's so beautiful and, um, and very skilled as well. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, you know, if you care to share just a little bit, we'd love to know. That's all right. I've just hit my officially one year of trying to teach myself how to video edit and upload on YouTube. And um, a big part of that came from I got really fascinated watching other people's time lapses and videos and them painting. Yeah. And I think part of it is I really like watching back 
how I've made decisions and followed that wave that we were talking about um, of the painting and being able to watch it in hyperspeed, it feels really accomplishing. So sometimes if you're working on a painting for two months or something long like that, it's very easy to feel like you're getting nowhere with it. But being able to watch back your process on video or even through a couple of different still photos, take your photo at the end of every painting session, it, it can sort of get you feeling back like, yeah, I am accomplishing something. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's just a really long road. So yeah, it's it's been really fun to learn new skills and just have a have a go at video because I've, I've not been formally trained in any of this sort of stuff. Um, I did have a graphic design background originally, but that was more in logo and vector design and that sort of thing. So this is all sort of new little feathers I'm trying to add to my hat. And yeah, it's been quite fun. The videos? Are they, where, where can we watch some of these videos of yours? Oh, all stuff? on my YouTube channel. So all my social media and my YouTube are all under Liz Gridley Artist. And you're more than welcome to go and have a look at my yeah. vid video time lapses and experimentations. <laughs> Thank you. All that info under the video as well for people to see so that they can, they can follow you and see what you're doing. Now, you, you do a lot of your painting on aluminium board too, don't you? Yes. Is it oils? Oil, it's oils that you use. Is it oils yes. on aluminium? it's all oil painting and it's an aluminium composite panel so it's actually like a little sandwich of a thin sheet of aluminium a sheet of heavy duty plastic and then a thin sheet of aluminium so it's a really stable board that isn't affected by humidity or mold or anything like that that can affect canvas and wood and more traditional supports um, but it yeah also gives me this fun ability to use a reflective surface which affects the light and how the light bounces through the paint film and back out at you um, so it really plays with color and light on that. Yeah, it gives it a real luminosity, doesn't it? And, um, and, and also, you can't always see it in the photos as well. Like if people come to your studio and see your work um, in, in reality, there's a, you know, even, I mean, there's definitely luminosity in the photos, but there's more luminosity in... I think it's the, more, it's really hard to capture how even if you shift your head slightly in front of the work, it changes. And that's what how the lights in the room are hitting it move as you move. And I'm trying to get to that a bit more in the videos. But yeah, it, it's a frustrating thing to photograph. Yes. <laughs> Honestly, I make I make life hard for myself. You're really good job because it's hard enough just painting, uh, photographing a painting on a canvas. There's a reflection. Mm. I mean, that's that hard work, let alone yeah. a shiny surface. I mean, my goodness, you do a very good job photographing it. I have. Thank to you. Um, so yes, I think your work is very beautiful. Now, is it only figures that you do? I don't mean just only, because I mean- No, no, no. Um, I've recently been experimenting with uh, landscape a little bit, more so cloudscapes. So um, using forms of clouds and light and trying to play with that idea of the emotional response without a figure. Um, and then I do also enjoy still lifes as well. So uh, setting up something in my studio and really dedicating myself to capturing the form is quite fun. Um, I'm just not as, I don't put as much time and effort into still life and landscape and I'd really like to do more. Even like plein air landscape. I watch all my friends, artist friends doing plein air landscapes and I'm like, oh, I'd love to give that a go. And I haven't sort of got the gusto to go out yet. <laughs> So, uh, and, and so in your time of, um, well, self-taught, but uh, has there been sort of a, an aha moment or talking to other artists or people who have given you sort of an inspiration or ideas towards your, your art? Oh, definitely. Um, well, back when I started with life drawing, so I went to my first life drawing class at 14 at the local art society, Ringwood Art Society. Um, I definitely had a few adopted art grandparents and things like that who would, tell me little tips and tricks and I'd say that I've been pretty much taught through research and tips and tricks um, so even little workshops that I've done and things like that things like learning about what an underpainting is what is a, a, a value chart from dark to light and how you can balance your colors between dark and light or learning about the importance of temperature if something cool or warm and asking yourself that the whole way through they've always been wonderful little tips and tricks in my head i did a great workshop with um robin ely who's a australian artist working in la he came over to adelaide and did a little five-day workshop and i went to that and that was fantastic because he basically took all these tiny little wires in my head of tips and tricks that i picked up and then joined the wires together i was like oh that's why that does that oh 
that's why this colour goes weird after a while because I'm mixing it too much with white and it's going chalky and actually I could use a lighter other colour to mix with it and then it'll keep its chroma and things oh, like wow. that. Okay, that's fascinating. So yeah. isn't that great? So oh, it's something I never knew I needed. And I think that's the hardest part when you're a self-taught artist and there's so many of us out there is yeah. sometimes you don't know which wires need to be connected. So never stop learning, never stop looking for more tips and tricks because one will just yeah. yeah, yeah. It's one of my favourite sayings is that you don't know what you don't know. Yes, hundred yeah. percent true. <laughs> yeah, because you really don't. <laughs> and then you learn it, and you go, "Oh, that, yeah. no, I needed to know that." Isn't it fantastic? But I'm very happy I know it now. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, that's fantastic. Oh, well, that's that's really interesting. Um, and so for a young artist, because artists out there just just starting, what would your advice be to, to them in terms of their work? Don't be scared to be ambitious. Oh, that's a good one. I that's, like that. that's one I'm recently coming to because I always sort of grew up with art is fun and I love art, but it's not like a real career and it won't earn me real money, so I shouldn't pursue it. And now it's like, I've lived my whole life trying to dart around it, doing graphic design, doing retail, doing all these other jobs around. It's like, no, I want to be an artist. I want to be ambitious. I want to win the Archibald one day. Yes, yeah. let's you do this. Go. So <laughs> I'm going to work towards that. Yeah. Don't be afraid to be ambitious. That's no. right. We are sort of almost taught the minute you say you want to be an artist, you're, yeah. you're almost immediately discouraged in some ways, aren't you? Oh, you're, you know. You're, uh, you're Australia particularly yeah. has a real cultural problem with supporting the arts, which is really ridiculous because every article that comes out that's like the arts brings these many billions of dollars into the economy, but also they don't deserve to be supported in any which way. And the only way they can be supported is grants that are hyper competitive and you have to prove your worth above all other artists. It's, it's just very anti-productive and it's frustrating and it's something you need to actively fight against this feeling of art isn't work. Art is work and it's work that we do and yes. it's work that is worth the cultural significance and the money significance that it brings to the country. So God damn, we deserve to be supported. God damn, we do. <laughs> Absolutely. I could not agree more, Liz. That's fantastic. What great words of advice. That's great. I'm going to put that on my website, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> you go, girl. And I'll be one of the first cheering when you win the Archibald. I think that's fantastic. Oh, as long as you're not in it too, then I'll be too... It's too... Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> we, can, we, can, we can, but we'll share it. How's that? This, <laughs> is, what, this is why I haven't entered yet. I need all my cool art friends to win it first and then I'll enter it. No, I'll enter it soon, but yeah, I, I keep sort of going next year next year i'll enter and then this year i was like next year i'll enter so i've got my fingers crossed for a number of artists this year though so oh that's yeah. good yeah yeah, yeah. I, was, I just think as long as good art's being encouraged then that's yeah. Yeah, that's what we what we need and what we love liz i cannot thank you enough for sharing your expertise with us and your generous spirit and oh your thank you for having me it's been a lovely chat thank you absolutely pleasure.